Hey you guys, it's Britt. Today we're here to talk about Jordan Cheyenne's return to YouTube. She did post a video and I had some thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. Alright you guys, so as some of you might know, this is my second time recording this video. Um, the first time that I did, I had sound issues and I tried to fix them. Nothing fixed them. So this is round two. So technically it's not a blind reaction, but I still have a ton of thoughts and this video still needs to happen. Now, before I get into the reaction, if you guys don't know who Jordan Cheyenne is, I will link a couple other videos in my description box. About five months ago, she was exposed for emotionally manipulating her son in order to get a really sad thumbnail, even though her poor son was already very upset about their puppy Rosie having parvo and being treated at the vet clinic. Come here, come closer for the video, come closer. I'm closer. I'm closer. Put your head, put your head right here. I'm closer. closer. Down. Put your head down here. Act like you're crying really quick. I am crying. Go like this. No, I'm not, but I'm actually seriously crying. No, I know, but go like this for the video. Go like this. Put one hand up. Go like this. No, go like this. Put your hand like this. But let them see your mouth. Let them see your mouth. No, I'm not, but I'm actually crying. crying. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me, look at me. I know, look at me, look at me. Look at the camera, look at the camera. And he was very distraught. And of course, like a lot of other family vloggers, she decided to make sure that it was content. And part of making it content was also getting the thumbnail that she thought would gain the most attention and the most um, views and clicks for her channel. Obviously, it always comes down to money. How can I get more attention? How can I get more subscribers out of this situation? And never will I shame someone for being upset over their dog being sick. You guys know I'm extremely, you know, like my dog is like my child, basically. I know that people don't like that analogy, but I'm very in tune with, you know, how is he feeling? How is he acting? If he needs to go to the vet, like we're there. So I'm not ever going to dictate someone's emotions um, because having a sick dog is gut-wrenching. Nobody wants to go through that. And if you guys are animal owners or pet owners, you'll know exactly what that feels like. It's very stressful, it's very emotional, but there's also a time and a place for content. And once you get into that family vlogger mindset of how can I put this in the vlog? How can I make sure that I get it, uh, paid off of this? How can I make sure that people are watching this for longer than usual? It, you, When you get into that mindset of everything being content um, and everything equating to a dollar in your pocket, it can become very dangerous. And it's one thing if you're gonna do that for yourself, but problem is, is that with family vloggers, they obviously have kids that are involved. And when we're talking about, um, you know, a child's emotions being exploited, um, it's extremely uh, scary. And there are lifelong consequences to children being manipulated by their parents. Um, over the summer when this happened in the late summer, I shared my own story of how when I was younger, my mother would emotionally manipulate me and that's something that's followed me for my entire life. So it definitely has a ripple effect. I hope that her son is okay in all of this and we're going to get into what she has to say. Just FYI, so that this video is not super duper long, I have sped up her video to 1.25 times speed. Not so that she's, you know, speaking crazy, but just so we can get through it a little bit quicker, hopefully. Guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been five months since I have uploaded any content on any of my social media platforms. And, oh my gosh, saying welcome back to my channel gets me very emotional because I didn't know if there would ever be a welcome back to my channel. Um, 
first let's talk about before we get too far into this the title and the beginning of this video the title of her video is i was canceled worldwide and my life changed forever well first of all you weren't canceled because here you are back on your channel putting up content the word canceled is thrown around so much by influencers and youtubers i can't think of anyone that was actually canceled if you are canceled it's because you cancel yourself and you decide to leave your platform and never come back typically what's going on is there is a break in uploads and upon the return it's an apology video that is usually not a very good one it's a lot of deflecting a lot of blame shifting um so she wasn't canceled and i can't stand when that word is thrown around it's something that people want some accountability for they have every right to share their opinions about what they saw this is not something where a clip was taken out of context or someone spliced a bunch of her words together and used it against her this was her showing us exactly what happens behind the scenes of getting a uh, click worthy thumbnail people had thoughts about it and people wanted some accountability from her actions that were unintentionally uploaded to her channel that day. Now, I know that a lot of people were very upset, including myself, regarding um, Dad Challenge Podcast, giving her a platform after what she did. And I understand your all's anger, I understand the frustration, and I'm right there alongside you. There's been a lot of different arguments kind of mentioned as far as what that interview did. I will say what I've been saying since the first time that I saw that interview and I talked about it on my channel. Nobody is saying that you have to be mean, rude, harsh, vile, anything. But when you're given an opportunity to do an interview and you're supposed to be the leader of the anti-family vlogger movement, you approach it with concise questions you make it clear that there is an expectation for answers during this interview and you don't lollygag and play super friendly just because this person decided to give you some attention it's tough you know doing interviews it's not a cakewalk but if you are so um egotistical and so sure of yourself then that should have been something that was easily achieved by asking the hard-hitting questions and not, you know, wanting to go make s'mores with the girl. Like, she literally exposed herself for being a manipulator of her son. Um, I'm going to try and get through this video as quick and concise and to the point as I can. Um, I have filmed this video two or three other times within the past week, and all I did was cry. Um, so much has happened in my life the past five, six months. My entire life has changed, as I'm sure all of you can assume. This is what all influencers say. I tried to film this video. I was so upset. I've been so upset. This is something that is a constant kind of way to play off people's emotions because when you hear that, you're automatically thinking, wow, she must have been so upset if she couldn't even post the video or she couldn't even get through filming it. Um, poor girl must have just been so distraught, but let's be real, at the end of the day, I will always remember that clip and exactly what she showed us, and we're going to talk at the end of the video about some of the comments that were left on here, but what she did was not a mistake. You don't manipulate people by a mistake. A mistake would be forgetting to return your book to the library. A mistake would be giving your child ice cream when they're lactose intolerant and you don't know about it. Uh, every aspect of my personal life, uh, my mentality and inner healing that I've needed to do, my relationship with my family, with my friends, my work, my finances, every single thing has changed within the past five months. So when she talks about her inner healing and her relationship with her friends, her family, her finances, I do find it interesting that she didn't list her son i feel like he would be the one that needs the most attention and the most healing out of all of this because not only could this allegedly be a long-term pattern that she's been doing this with him and we just so happen to see it this one time 
So that could be detrimental, but let's just say that this was an isolated incident that was uploaded and that's what we saw. If that was isolated, that is still something that is going to affect him uh, so deeply. And he's at the age where he's not an adult. He can't figure out, these are my emotions, this is how I'm feeling. So it's not only the devastation part, but it's also the embarrassment. His classmates could have found that about this. Um, you know, his neighborhood friends, like, I don't know what his situation is, but when you decide to put your life out onto YouTube and you do something like this to your child, it not only is going to affect them because of the actual situation, but also all of the other repercussions that kind of follow after the fact. And I have deeply, deeply, deeply missed my YouTube and Instagram job and this community that I built over the past seven years has, aside from Christian, I would say building this entire YouTube community and business and sharing the good, the bad, the sad, everything with you guys on my channel. Aside from having my son, that has literally been the highlight of my life. I know. When YouTubers come back and they say that they've missed their subscribers, I'll give you guys my honest opinion as I always do. I don't think that she missed her actual subscribers because she probably only knows a handful of them. Um, but when something like this happens and you're a full-time YouTuber and you go away and you're missing out on that normal AdSense check that comes in and then, you know, brand deals and other forms of uh, income that you might get every month, that's what you miss because you realize that your nest egg has been shattered by your own actions. And for me, I don't feel bad about that. I don't feel bad that your actions caused you to have to take a break and have to come back and apologize for stuff. Um, you know, if, if you're a person in the dark, it will come to light sooner or later. And that's why I've said, I don't think that what happened with her son was a one-off thing. I, in my opinion, allegedly think that there was a lot of coaching being done behind the scenes on how to look, what to say, what not to say. Um, you know, this is how we get more attention. Like, I think that he was much more involved in creating this false content than she will ever admit. Um, and it's unfortunate because if you look at the real side of things and you want it to be the real, the raw, the unfiltered, like so many influencers say that they want it to be portrayed and this is what I'm you guys know me you know who I am if it's so real and raw then why did you have to manipulate your son into posing for a thumbnail because that's not unfiltered and real and raw that is coaching him on what you want him to look like the child was already upset he was already in shambles over his puppy being sick and you were coaching him to add it on and make it sadder and make it this way. And so that's not real and raw and that's not being authentic. And I'm just sharing my life with you guys. Never had that really tight-knit community or a lot of friends growing up. I never had any of that. So when I built that on YouTube, you know, over the years and became friends with so many of you and really felt like I had such a positive tight-knit community, it was literally like the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I have so deeply missed all of you and this job and creating content most youtubers it's the income that you know keeps them going like let's be honest having a sense of community is amazing it's super exciting but when you're talking about someone who does youtube full-time and relies on this as how they're going to pay their bills every single month the focus shifts from a sense of community to okay this is now actually paying me a lot and it's putting me in a safer financial position than I was before. So the focus goes from the community and just putting out content that you want to put out to this is actual, uh, this is an actual business. And that's where the um, relatability factor kind of goes down and you start to see a less authentic version of the person that was uploading videos a year ago or three years ago or however long ago. More than I can say. Five months ago, I made a terrible, terrible decision, which I am 
so deeply upset with myself for that I can't even articulate. I've had such a deep sadness within me that everything that happened and that has kind of crumbled, to be totally honest with you, in my world the past five months, I've had such a deep regret and sadness that I'm the one that caused that. I chose to put my content and making a video ahead of the emotional needs of Christian in that moment. And it's been my absolute biggest regret. Um, that was an extremely emotional day. We got a puppy, it turns out she had parvo took her to the emergency vet and they told us she might not make it. Uh, I do so this is the thing that I'm talking about where everyone understands, and even if you're not a current pet owner, you might have owned a, owned a pet growing up or people understand what dealing with an unhealthy or sick pet feels like. People understand the emotion and the sadness and the anxiety that can go alongside not knowing First of all, you don't know what's wrong with the dog. Second, you get a diagnosis. Third, you have to hope that the animal responds to the treatment plan. Fourth, there's also a money factor in it for some people. Um, you know, I, in fact, I would actually say a lot of people because vet bills are expensive. And if you're going in there not having any clue what's going on, we could be talking about a $60 office visit to say everything's okay, or we could be talking about the dog having to be admitted and stay in the vet for 10 days, 12 days and have medications and treatments and don't even get me started on surgery. So there's a lot that goes into it. Based on my seat, there was never a problem with the emotion that was in that clip. Um, should it have been in the vlog? Definitely not. Um, but nobody is having an issue with that being sad, emotional, and a really hard day. It was an issue of her not being happy with the emotions that her son was displaying in the thumbnail. It was not enough. It wasn't sad enough. So she took it upon herself to coach him and pose him. And it was like a, you know, puppeteer. It was so cringeworthy and gross. And so not only is he dealing with this from his mother, but he's also still dealing with the sadness and not having any clue what's going on with his dog. Is the dog going to make it? Um, so everyone understands the emotions of being a pet owner and having a sick pet, but that still is not an excuse or an explanation or gives any justification, in my opinion, to what she did and we all saw it that was not a clip that was taken out of context that was not something that was spliced together by a hater and posted online that was exactly what it was the only mistake here is the fact that she mistakenly uploaded it to her channel a few things really quickly there has been a new viral clip going around saying that the puppy died and then i pulled out the camera and made a video about our dog dying that's completely false i've been off all social media for five months so i'm not sure where people are getting this information rosie did not die thank god she was in the emergency vet for about two weeks and then she did get to come home but she had very very bad parvo and they told us she may not make it i'm glad that the dog is okay obviously that's amazing news i don't know who I haven't seen this clip of anyone saying that the dog died, like, don't do that. It's unnecessary. There's enough to, um, what's, what's Josh's word? Dismantle. We can dismantle her videos. We don't need to lie because she has already dug the hole herself and we can just react to everything that has already been said. There's no reason to take things out of context or make up total lies. That's why we were, you know, initially crying and very upset in that first video. Um, but yeah, I've tried to film this video a few times within the past week and it's been incredibly emotional for me because the hate and bullying and cancellation that I've been through the past five months has been absolutely, absolutely traumatizing, if I'm gonna be honest with you. This is something that a lot of influencers do and I want to say, obviously, I will never... You guys know my stance. This is why I make it so crystal clear exactly where I stand. And I know that sometimes it can come off as a broken record or like, oh, she was repeating herself. But things that I feel are important, I will repeat myself because I don't want anyone to question, where does she stand? Like, I've never heard her talk about that. When it comes to bullying, harassing, saying YouTubers or influencers, um, it is never needed. We can keep all of our comments on YouTube. There can be 50 videos made about the same topic, opinion shared, you know, share your thoughts in DMs or comment sections. There's so many ways to get your thoughts out there. Um, however, on the flip side of that, 
This is something I see all the time with influencers. Instead of coming on here and taking accountability, she wants to talk about the obvious fact that having a sick dog is sad and emotional and then automatically goes into the bullying and the harassing that she has been, you know, on the receiving end of. I don't understand. A lot of influencers, you'll sit there and it's like, I swear that they hire these PR teams and or bare minimum, she worked with her attorney on this statement, I would hope. I'll never understand why these influencers cannot just, this video could have been two minutes or less. It should have said, I'm really sorry for the things that I did involving my son. You guys saw it with your own two eyes. There's no excuse and there's no explanation for why I did that. Going forward, I am going to show you that I am not the person in that clip. And I'm also taking my son off my channel because I realized that that should have never been a part of my channel. And I'm learning, I'm growing, and I hope that you guys give me a second chance. I'm deeply sorry, goodbye. That could have been the video, taking accountability, stating some kind of action that she's taking, which is removing her son, and hoping that people stick around and give you a second chance. Instead, it's a 16 minute video laced with excuses, explanations, talking about the harassing stuff that she has been a part of. Like, if you wanna talk about cancel culture and how you think you were canceled, make that a different video. The accountability itself would take less than two minutes to post to your channel. Uh, maybe I can go into this in another video. Oh, fuck, I wish I could talk about everything that I've been through on that side of it, but I don't wanna seem like I'm coming off as the victim or like, oh, poor me. You are, just stating it for what it is. This is definitely, if she didn't want people to feel bad for her, then the harassing stuff and all of this and the state of her mental health would have been left for a completely different video. Um, that's just my opinion. I understand that emotions run high and it's probably very hard to be on the receiving end of this. Um, if she actually did go through a whole lot, who knows, influencers lie, that's just my opinion. Um, but if you really want people to understand and give you a second chance and be willing to see what's next for you, I personally feel like all of this other kind of nonsense could have been left for a separate video. But I think there is definitely a conversation to be had about cancel culture and about how far people take things. Um, I mean, I've had so many the cancellation and the messages and the death threats that I've got and the comments that I've got. People have put my address out there, my family's personal information, harassed my family, harassed my family's jobs, hacked into all of my accounts on every level. Shit that has been absolutely, absolutely terrible for me and put me in such a state of, I'm gonna be honest, a few months ago, I was in a really, really bad depression. Um, I'm pretty, I'm kind of out of it now. I know my mentality is a lot better and a lot stronger now, even though I'm still upset and I'm still emotional. It's just because I've been through so much the past five months. Oh, I'm so sorry, it's getting out of focus. Um, I've been through so much that I literally can't even articulate. And this is what I'm saying. All of this kind of stuff could have been a separate video. Talk about mental health, talk about people going real life because I don't agree with any of that. But this video was supposed to be a return video. A, I hope you guys give me a second chance because YouTube is my nest egg and I hope that I didn't blow it. Um, that's what the intent of this video was. And I just don't feel like the sad fishing and all of the other bullshit that was put into this video was called for. But she's, ta she's talked a lot about what she's been through. I hope that she understands that her son has also been experiencing all of these emotions and more, and the fact that he's a young child and doesn't know how to process emotions like an adult does. So I hope that, you know, she ta she's talked about how she's in therapy and she's been, you know, helping herself. I hope that that energy and that patience and dedication was given to her son a hundred times over what she did for herself because like I said, um, you know, kids don't understand. They don't understand being in that situation. They don't understand the aftermath, the fallout, the mental health impact. And let's not even get started on the fact that this is going to have an impact on him for the rest of his life. And it was put out onto a public platform for everybody to see.
to like cry or anything in this video, but if it happens, it's just because everything in my world has changed and this has all been insanely emotional for me. Um, but yeah, once this happened, I obviously took down my social media um, and I thought, you know, I it's been emotional for her wallet, let's be honest. I might need a few weeks or a month or even two months off of social media. Little did I know at that time, I had to get so real and honest with myself and ask myself a lot of deep questions and you know reprioritize everything. I had to ask myself, why did I get to a place where I was prioritizing content? I don't know about other YouTubers, but for me, I've been doing YouTube for seven years. And like I said, it's, it's literally been a highlight of my life and so fun to grow this community. You're prioritizing content because it's your main source of income. Nobody has to be a genius to figure that out. Once, like I said, once you make that shift from doing YouTube on a, you know, what I would consider a part-time basis, once you make that transition to full-time, it's obviously because your income is enough to sustain your lifestyle um, or more. So it, it doesn't take a whole lot to be able to sit back and say, well, yeah, of course content is gonna be a priority and boundaries are going to be pushed or erased completely because at this point this is my full-time income i have to make sure my videos are doing well or else i won't be able to pay my rent i won't be able to provide for my child i won't be able to buy groceries so it seems like any um integrity or respect that you would have for certain situations tends to go away once youtube becomes your full-time job and I'm not saying that's with everybody, that's not a rule across the board or anything like that, but many times with influencers, you can see the shift and it usually happens around the time that they start doing YouTube full time because they have to make sure that their videos are performing or poor little influencer might have to go back to the workforce like the rest of us, God forbid. And like, I mean, before all of this, my community was 98% positive. Like everyone in the comments was so uplifting and so nice to each other and nice, kind to me and Christian. Like you guys feel like we're part of your family. Everyone always says like, oh, I love my subscribers. But like, I really do. I genuinely feel like I built a bond and like a little family within my community. So to have all of that taken away these past five months due to- She's really leaning on this emotional side of her subscribers in between the mentioning the mental health side of things and how her subscribers are family and she's friends with everyone and she loves everyone. Like I said, that's all fine and good, but that should have been a completely separate video. This was supposed to be a video to take some accountability and hope that people give you another chance after you were exposed for manipulating your son on camera. We all saw it. An action that I did has been internally very, very hard for me to process. Um, it's something I've had to talk a lot about in therapy. Anyways, what I was saying, I don't know if other YouTube- I hope her son is in therapy as well, if she is. I assume that he is, but I really hope so. Definitely get to a place where you feel like you have to get the content all the time, right? I would constantly do things with Christian and go out to events and whatever, and you constantly feel that pressure that you have to bring the camera, have to take this angle, have to do this thumbnail and what have you. And I had these past five months to do so much internal work within myself and ask myself why I got to a place where I was prioritizing that, especially on such- And listen, you can prioritize content without manipulating your children. There are many other YouTubers on this platform and maybe we just haven't seen it yet, but there are a lot of YouTubers who go to events and vlog daily and all the things, but they're not manipulating their children or their family or friends in order to get a thumbnail that they deem to be a quality thumbnail so that they get a bigger AdSense check. Um, so. There is such a thing as prioritizing your content and not being a dirtbag when you think the camera is off. It's an emotional day where Christian and I were already so upset over this situation and I am so deeply disgusted at myself and regretful that I even got to that place. Like I can't even watch the clip back. That is not a reflection at all of the deep, deep love that I have for Christian. A lot of people saw that one clip. Maybe she should watch the clip back. Maybe she should watch it back a hundred times so that she can understand why people were so irate and pissed off with her. And it wasn't an overreaction. It wasn't people having a uh, fake outrage and just trying to cancel her. It was people that saw exactly what she did and they were unhappy with it. And um, like I said, you this whole prioritizing content, I was emotional, has nothing to do with explaining the fact that she was not happy with how sad her son was and was coaching him to look sadder for a f***ing thumbnail.
and just thought, oh, she's shit, she's a terrible mother. They have no idea that literally all I've been doing since Christian has been born is been trying to build an incredible life for him, you know, have financial security, take him out for adventures and literally just give him the best life possible. So the fact that... So the financial security and going for adventures and stuff, this is what I wanna say. I've talked about this a few other times, but when it comes to a child's um, upbringing, what the child wants and what they crave so deeply is not trips to Disney and the newest PlayStation and stuff. Like those are extras. And um, as, as a child gets older, what they're gonna remember are, you know, the conversations that they had with their parents and good quality time and not being emotionally manipulated and, um, you know, not being talked down to. And having that connection when they're sad, they know that a camera was not in their face. They know that their parent or parents were there for them and they were emotionally present um, in order to give them a shoulder to cry on. They weren't worried about getting a clip or filming the whole thing so that they could throw it up on YouTube. That's what a child is gonna remember. So that's fine if she wants to provide the financial side of things and trips and all this but i am telling you as an adult who went through some things in my childhood what i look back and remember is when i was having a really bad day having my um you know parents undivided attention it wasn't them watching a youtube video and kind of like glancing over and just nodding their head or um taking a picture so that they could save the moment. Be present. The trips and all that can come later, um, but kids need presence and they need support. And that's what I see so many times with these vlog parents is the presence is never there. It's constantly trying to be um, compensated by going to Disney and going to a fancy restaurant and buying all the toys and the Easter baskets and stuff. I worked very hard on putting out content for seven years that was positive and uplifting and about trying to be the best mom that I can. The fact that something blew up, it that put me in such a negative light and that was just such a bad thing that I did. It wasn't a negative light. It was exactly what you did. It was not something that was clipped and like I said, taken out of context, let's stop building the narrative that this was some kind of massive slip up that people overreacted to. It didn't paint you in a bad light. It didn't show you in a bad light. It showed you in the light that you are. And who knows, that might have been a pattern. We'll never know. But for now, let's focus on what we actually saw. And that was not painting someone in a bad light. It was showing us exactly who they were. Has been extremely extremely hard for me to battle and internalize there's nothing whatsoever okay about what i did it is literally disgusting i have i have absolutely no excuse i should have turned off the camera in that moment just tended to christian and his emotions and just been there for him and not not been prioritizing my content at all like i said that is not a reflection of the overall mom that i am there shouldn't have been a camera involved in that day at all if it was so emotional and so difficult for her as a parent and then obviously it was difficult for her child. You don't need the camera, you don't need anything. Handle what's in front of you, which is your sick dog. Make sure that you are a shoulder to cry on for your child because that is your responsibility as a parent. And pick up YouTube a couple days later. Let it rest, let it simmer, be there for your child, Fuck the vlog and all this other stuff, Instagram, that's what really mattered and she showed where her priority was. I have an, an immense deep love for my son. He is an amazing, amazing little boy. If you've been watching our channel for any amount of time, Christian is such a miracle. You know, he was born at one pound, was not supposed to make it and did make it, which I believe God pulled him through all of that for a reason and he's gonna grow up and do amazing things in this world. And I am so blessed to be Christian's mom. And you can love your child and still not do things that are in their best interest. Um, you know, I have no doubt that my mother, you know, loved me as a child. But at the same time, a lot of the things <clears throat> that she would do did not come from a place of love. They came from a place of greed and her being very selfish and only worrying about her needs. Um, but I still know that she loved me.
but that doesn't mean that her actions were justified and that doesn't mean that she was a fantastic parent. So you can love your child and still not do things that are in their best interest. I don't think that love is really the question there. It's the issue at hand of what we all saw. He is an amazing, amazing kid. He is so joy filled. He's always smiling. He's always laughing. And he is an absolutely amazing kid. And I've done absolutely nothing but prioritize him and my family and be as present as possible these past five months. And I've made a lot of... Well, it's a shame that it's for the past five months and not for the last nine years. Sounds like she really just had a completely different list of priorities until that clip was exposed and people wanted answers. Change in my personal life. You know, I think sometimes deep internal change happens in private. Obviously, I haven't been filming, haven't been vlogging. I've made a lot of positive changes on my end, on the back end. And I do just want to address a few things real quick. I don't want to make this video too long, but a lot of people were saying, oh, you lied. You said you deleted your channel. I did delete my channel. So when all this hate was happening um, and it got really, really bad, I was getting hate comments every millisecond, it felt like. This was months ago. And I was, I'm going to be honest with you guys, just having a breakdown one night, hysterically, emotionally crying. My friend Ashley came over. People put my address out there. I literally didn't even want to be in my apartment alone and was just so deeply sad. And I remember calling my dad that night and I said, I'm going to delete my channel. It's just time for something new. The hate is just so bad. I was obviously not in a good mental state. I was getting so much hate that, and not just like, oh, we don't like you, like kill. Understand now, I don't personally believe this part of her video. If you delete your channel, then your channel is gone. Why out of all people would she be able to delete her channel and YouTube by a miracle be able to recover it? What I think is that she hid her channel so that it no longer appeared when you searched, all the videos were hidden and when she was ready to come back once the dust had settled she put it back up because to me yeah i i just don't believe the whole deleting and then by some weird chance youtube was able to get it back i she probably considered deleting it but then once she realized that all of her subscribers and all of her videos would be gone um that's when we saw the channel, you know, kind of get like hidden. That's just my opinion. Tell yourself there, I'll, I can put some stuff up on the screen here of emails that I've got of people saying the most vulgar, downright disgusting, nasty things. I completely see why if anyone has been through anything even remotely similar to this, why they would never come back to social media or why they- So this is the problem with influencers. Trust is broken. So I see these really vulgar comments and messages that she allegedly received, but because I don't trust her, um, my issue is I look at this and I automatically think this could be from a fake email that she sent herself. It could be from a sock account on Instagram that she sent to herself. So if she did receive those, never will agree with any of this kind of, you know, nonsense that some people feel like they can send. But on the flip side, I also realize that I don't trust any influencer really fully. Um, so when I see this, I feel like it's being inserted as a way to continue to play off people's emotions and just add another layer to what she is saying her cancellation was. Would never, you know, face their audience or face YouTube or face Instagram again. These comments are enough to really make people go into a very, very, very bad mental depressive you know, anxiety filled state. And I know that all of this is because of that extremely poor, horrible action that I took. I'm the victim in no way here. What I did is disgusting. If I could take it back in a second, I would. But if you're not the victim, then why still say the same things over and over again? On top of that, I've already, you know, admitted that and acknowledged that full wholeheartedly. On top of that, you know, the hate that came with it. None of it was constructive or positive or parenting advice. It was all just, we hate you, kill yourself, like literally terrible. So anyways, I was in a panicked state and I deleted my YouTube channel. And I deleted it one night and I just fell asleep bawling my eyes out. And I remember thinking, I'm so internally sad that I worked so hard to build something for seven years and it was such a positive, you know, joy-filled experience for me and, and here I am deleting it. And I, I like almost couldn't believe that I did that. And I woke up the next day and I called my dad and I was like, look, it's just time for something new. I deleted my channel. And I really did ask myself, I've had a lot of time. I've had five months offline. I've asked myself multiple times, what else is it that makes me happy? What else are my passions? And if you've been a subscriber for a while, you know I'm very creative. I love singing and playing guitar and drawing and making vision boards. Like I'm just a creative artistic person. So nothing, I, I feel like I will only be genuinely happy and fulfilled in life if I'm doing something within that field. And that's what YouTube and Instagram has been for me. It's been a way to document my life and Christian and be creative and artistic. And it's been, it's been the best job that I've ever had. It's because of the income. 
let's be honest. Um, you know, if she's passionate about other things, then she could do those other things, but those other things will not pay her the way that YouTube and sponsorships and brand deals will. It's been the funnest. I've made some of my best friends and I can wholeheartedly say within the past five months, I have just deeply missed creating content for you guys more than I can say. And I asked myself so many times, is it is it right to come back? Do I wanna come back? And obviously now I'm here. I'm she missed the income. Making this video because I've decided that I, there's nothing else I want to do but come back and make the best possible content for you guys and move forward in a positive way and just do the absolute best that I can do for the future. That's all I can do. Me rolling over and dying and quitting on all of my dreams is just not an option and that wouldn't be me being the best. Well, nobody's asking her to quit, but when you decide to come back, this should have been a video full of accountability and not all the other nonsense that was a lace through this entire video. Like I said, 16 minute video could have been two minutes or less take accountability, move on, and post your next video where you talk about your journey, because I'm not gonna say nobody can talk about their own mental health on their channel, um, but as far as a return video where you want people to listen and hear you out, this was a whole lot of excuses and literally a small amount of accountability mom that wouldn't be me advocating and working hard for a better life for christian that would be a complete disservice to him to myself to my audience everything so i decided that even though i know i'm coming back to a lot of hate i also know there's positivity and love out there and that we can all we all can you know learn and grow so with that being said i want to let you guys know the decision that i've made for the future mm, it's gonna make me sad the decision i've made for the future with youtube is that i will not be showing christian and ugh, it makes me really really sad because I know it's the right decision. I know that my child deserves. Well, and she shouldn't be showing him. That should be a very easy decision to make as a parent to protect your child instead of exploiting their emotions, showing every detail of their life. That should be, um, in my opinion, that should be a very easy decision to make. Nobody's saying you can't film your kid or take pictures, like that's crazy. But it doesn't have to be part of a vlog every single day. It's just all too much when it's such a consistent part of your channel. He deserves everything. He's an amazing kid. I want him to be so present in his life and just be enjoying, you know, going out and whatever we end up doing, I don't want him at all to have to focus on. Mom's pulling out the camera. I have to do this angle. I have to smile for this. I want him to be fully present. And well, he wasn't focused on that until you started telling him exactly what to do. You were not allowing him to react in a natural manner. You were telling him to look this way, put your hand that way, uh, look, look, look sadder. Like the whole thing was disgusting. So it, it really just, sh for me, it shined a light on how a lot of these kids are treated when the parents think the camera is off. It's a lot of coaching. It's a lot of manipulation. It's a lot of telling someone how to stand, how to pose, what to say, what to wear. And that's the issue in all of this and live his best life. And I know that's the right decision at my core. I know it is. I know that's the best for him and that's the best parenting decision as a mom for me. But also it makes me sad in a way, just in a selfish way, just because, you know, I've been sharing his life with you guys since the beginning and he's nine. He turned nine the other day. Obviously I didn't film his party or anything because I'm keeping him all offline, but we have had some amazing, amazing times on YouTube in the past nine years. I filmed some amazing times with Christian, some huge accomplishments that he's had, his birthdays and him reading his first book out loud and us buying Sadie. And um, I've shared the highlights of our life with you guys and you guys sharing in those moments with us. How do we know that they were amazing times and not times that you were telling him exactly what to do and how to act? It would be one thing if, you know, oh, it's like a genuine childhood growing up, but now it's like everything is being called into question. What's real and what's not? has been a highlight of my life for me, you know, like you guys being that community and being, making Christian and I feel like family has been amazing. I cannot even say thank you enough for how much we have loved within the past, you know, nine years sharing our life on YouTube. You guys have been so supportive and loving towards him and I can't thank you enough. Nobody was sharing, she was sharing their life. So Christian didn't sign up for this. He's a kid. He doesn't know the long-term effects that being on YouTube as a kid will have on him until he's a little bit older, he had no say so. You were the one running the show and we all saw that once you thought the camera was off. You were running the whole gig. And I will cherish all those memories and all that footage and everything 
forever. Um, but I've decided for now, moving forward, Christian will not be in the videos. Um, it's just the right decision for now. I think it's very important that for him and his mental health and just his life overall, I think it's very important that I stick to that. Um, will She's saying for now, I hope that it is permanent, but um, you know, what else is she gonna do? Bring her son back onto her channel? as her comeback or you know a month or two into her comeback i hope that she does keep him off forever but um again i don't trust influencers so there you go he be in a picture on instagrams here and there maybe months down the line uh but he will not be in the video footage anymore i will not be sitting down talking about his life anything medical anything relating to his personal life all those details all that's just got to stay offline and that's just it's just the right decision period no questions about it um so I also want to say now that I have addressed this, I will not be addressing it again. Um, again, I do think there is a much bigger conversation to be had with cancel culture and bullying. I mean, some of the stuff that I went through, literally being scared to be at my own apartment, so much shit. Also, just so you guys know, people have made so many fake profiles of me on every platform. There's tons of Facebook accounts. I do not have Facebook. If you see one with- Nobody should have to be scared to be in their own home. But again, I have a lot of questions as far as the, um, you know, the honesty factor with someone like this because she is uh, wanting to play off people's emotions in order to, you know, make them feel bad. That's just, it is what it is. So I have trust issues, but that's just me. My picture, it's not me. Also people making fake Facebook accounts and uploading pictures of my son acting like it's their son or acting like they're me is just so downright wrong on every level in my opinion. I obviously only have my one YouTube channel and my one Instagram account. I can't control what anyone else does, but those are not me. Um, but yeah, the cancellation and the bullying and all of that was taken to a very extreme level and I feel traumatized mentally by some of the things that happened. And while that has been so terrible, I have also just decided internally and made the choice that I'm not gonna let that stop me from succeeding in my future. So I took the necessary time that I needed to step away from social media, away from the camera, away from sharing my life on any- She took enough time where she felt like, if I come back now, then, you know, people are kind of done talking about it. There, there is a, um, for some people, there's an expiration date on how long they're upset at a certain person. Not saying everyone's like that, but with a lot of uh, these kind of issues that influencers and YouTubers get themselves into, not everyone's gonna care for five whole months. Some people might care for a month, some people might care for a day or two. Um, and so she waited for five months, hoping that the majority of people would not care that she's coming back now. ...level, and it just, it hasn't been the right time for me to come back yet. It wasn't, it just wasn't right. And currently at this time, I'm still obviously gonna be emotional. I mean, so much has happened, but I just feel I'm ready, you know, I'm ready. And I'm excited to bring you guys the best positive, loving content on my channel that I can, like I always have, you know, I've brought you fitness and vision boards and budgeting and just everything possible. Everything that my channel's already been about is what I'm gonna continue to do, but without Christian. So. I just wanna say I'm grateful if you took the time to watch this video. Um, uh, mm, I have a lot of anxiety about uploading it. I know I'm you know, coming back to, I don't know. I know there's love and support out there, but I just know that there's already people as well who've already made up their mind about me. Nothing I say is gonna change their mind. They already dislike me to such a big level and that's okay. I've just realized that I can't please. That is true, but I think that a lot of people would have been more willing to listen if this was a short video taking accountability and then all the other stuff could have been left for a completely different video. I might be completely wrong, but people are more people are more willing to hear you out if out of the gate it's accountability, not blame shifting, not stating the obvious that it was an emotional day because you had a sick animal. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but you guys tell me what you think down below. Everyone, I can't change people's opinion about me. I have to move forward every single day and strive to be the best mom and just person I can be. And that's it. And those who are still along for the ride, I literally cannot say how much, how grateful I am and how some of your DMs these past months have, have saved me and have lifted me up in moments where I've been so depressed and down. And I just, I've gotten a lot of hate, but I've also gotten a lot of positivity. So I want to say thank you for that. And I just, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I feel like I could ramble forever because so much has happened, but I am so grateful you took the time to watch this video. I will be- Those are probably comments similar to some of the ones that I mentioned earlier where people are calling it a mistake and in my opinion it was not a mistake it was mistakenly uploaded but be doing something so intentional i just can't see it as a mistake i don't care what kind of day that you're having um what we saw with that was 
mistakenly uploaded, but very intentionally done. And that's just my opinion. So I want to read a couple of these comments. Um, people were saying that they put up comments and they were deleted. She has a ton of positive comments. Um, but that could also be because she's deleting stuff. I don't know. The first one says, all of these people that commented are so fake and naive. It truly blows my mind. This woman neglected her son's feelings and made him cry on camera for a thumbnail. Come on now. Uh, the next one says, nobody deserves to get doxxed, but you obviously are still prioritizing your clout because this, video's fe this video feels fake as your apology. A picture on Instagram a couple months down the line becomes a short clip on YouTube and then all of this happens again, lol. And I also want to say that coming back and wanting to have people listen to you, it might have been best if the video didn't have ads on it because we're doing a full circle now of going back to prioritizing your income and how much money you can make on YouTube. Um, next one says you, you literally started with claiming to not want to appear as the victim and then proceeded to victimize yourself three different times. You were more hurt at how people are talking to you than you were uh, by emotionally neglecting your son. You're just pissed that you were caught. You and many others have used your children for views for way too long. You should have all of your socials ripped from you and never return. Um, you also began getting emotional because you're not going to record your son anymore. I wonder why that is as if you can't record him without uploading it to YouTube. Don't be mad because people are holding you accountable for your actions. So this one is a good one. Someone said it, people can often get canceled for mediocre reasons. You got canceled because you did something so horrible. Uh, people will never forget. Acts have consequences. Bullying is not okay, but what you, but what you did got you fired from the job, girl. Fired is in quotations. That's how life is. Uh, it's great that you regret it, but this will not erase the fact that you effed up. You live, you learn, but time doesn't go back. This channel is still very fake. I just try to leave a very honest comment and apparently you have words that you're not willing to hear because it will not populate and that's just cowardly. I would never wish you harm, but I do feel like you're still playing the victim and you have some more work to do and I don't think there's anything wrong with telling you that. And that's what I'm saying. These people that are kind of like, um, you know, subscribers, but they're let down by her actions and how things have unfolded. If this video was quick, clear, concise, and to the point, I think that some of these people might have been more willing to listen, but the lack of accountability, the blame shifting, the constantly explaining why that day was emotional, it seemed very much focused on her and her mental health instead of taking accountability for what she did to her son that we all saw crystal clear. So you guys can go check out the video if you want. You can look at the uh, comments if you don't want to watch the video. I mean, we watched it here, so no need to do that. But I would recommend go look at some of the comments and see what you guys think. So uh, I don't know what the future holds for Jordan. None of us do, but there are definitely a lot of people that don't forget things like this and they're not going to um, forgive her and it might take a very long time to see growth and change over an extended period of time before they're even willing to uh, visit her channel again. So that's going to be it for now. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.